Pleased to have you join us on the news on MITV. I am Wafai Samuel. A warm welcome to our viewers in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. First, the headlines on the news for tonight. President Muhammad Buhari resumes tomorrow. The Central Bank of Nigeria blames pressure on Naira over illegal trading. Or your state government warns headsmen from carrying gun. 35 people feared dead in Ethiopia's landslide that top stories on the international scene. On Sports News tonight, the major story says Barca suffers defeat from Deportivo. Good evening once again. Now the news in details. President Muhammad Buhari will tomorrow write the leadership of the two chambers of the National Assembly to formally notify them of his return to the country from London, United Kingdom. Also, the president will resume his official duties. This has been confirmed by the president's special advisor on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adishina. Adishina said President Muhammad Buhari will on Monday transmit letters to the National Assembly on his return to the country, making his return to work formally and constitutionally. It will be recalled that President Buhari on January 19th sent in a letter to the National Assembly informing them of his 10-day vacation in London. He also transited the powers to his office to his Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, according to the provisions of the 1999 constitutions as amended. The President, however, failed to return after 10 days which elapsed on February 6th. He later wrote another letter to the parliament extending his leave, informing them of his doctor's advice to stay abroad and run a series of medical tests. The extension was indefinite as no date of his return was given. The president, however, returned to the country last week Friday after spending 51 days in the United Kingdom to attend to his health. Former President Alicia Gunobasanjo has stressed the need for visionary and foresighted leadership in order to ensure good governance, national stability, and development in the country. He also wants Nigerians to emulate the virtues of the late Dr. Gabriel Olubumi Fake and the church to play its role as a formidable front for the implementation of leadership and corporate governance, especially in developing countries such as Nigeria. President, former President Obasanjo kicked against politicization of appointments and distribution of basic necessities of life. He said there are a few welfare responsibilities of the nation that should be politics free, including education, justice and health, while appointments at the leadership levels should be based on competence, knowledge and experience. Any other consideration will be at best suboptimal. Olusha Gnobasanjo stressed the need for strong family values, saying a nation consists of communities and families constitute communities. Therefore, the stability of a nation is largely dependent on how stable or robust the families are, and consequently, the communities, the nerve center of national stability is the family, he added. To issues around finance, the Central Bank of Nigeria's Governor CBN, Godwin Emifili, has attributed the pressures on exchange rates in the parallel market to illegal and criminal activities of some individuals. Emifili, who stated this in Lagos, also wants Nigerians to embrace the wave of nationalism sweeping across the globe, as exemplified by the Brexit in Britain and election of Donald Trump as President of the United States of America. Reacting to calls for the free float of the Naira exchange rate in order to address the gap between the interbank and parallel market exchange rates, Godwin Emefili explained that even a simple purchasing power parity analysis will accept that the Naira is not as weak as the rate the parallel market is suggesting. The governor of Central Bank went on to say that the only logical explanation to the high rates in that market is that a lot of illegal and criminal activities have been carried out there. Defending the foreign exchange rate restrictions imposed on some items, Godwin Emefile, the CBN governor, said the policy was basically born out of necessity to conserve foreign exchange. He added that no policy is cast in stone and hence there might be no need for it sometime in this country. The federal government says all arms of government need to develop new initiatives to combat the current economic downturn Nigeria is facing. 
The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enelema, disclosed this at the 2017 management retreat of the Standard Organization of Nigeria held in Lagos. The minister, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary Aminu Bisala, says the initiative includes the recovery and growth plan by the ministry aimed at resuscitating collapsed industries, boosting trade, attracting responsible foreign direct investment, development of medium-scale industries, and enhanced patronage for made in Nigeria goods and services. In his remarks, the Director General of the agency, Osita Aboloma, who spoke on the theme, Repositioning Standard Organizations of Nigeria for Optimal Performance in a Diversified Economy, added that the initiative is centered on revamping the nation's potentials outside the oil and gas sector. Of commodity prices undoubtedly provides a golden opportunity for Nigeria to develop its endowed domestic capacity in terms of production and consumption. The implication of this on the increased demand is the increased demand for your services nationwide. I'm glad that has been stated by the DG in his address. This challenge is better imagined, and I believe the entire staff need to be prepared for the challenges ahead. Your participation on the ongoing MSME clinic surely provides you the feel of Nigerians and the work that lies ahead in furtherance of the Ease of Doing Business initiative. On the other hand, central to the consumer, the average Nigerian, is the value for money, reliability, and safety, all pivot to your mandate. We are moving from oppressors, or what we used to know, to business facilitators. We've been charged with the mandate of creating an enabling environment for business to strive in Nigeria. We've keyed into um, Nigerian industrial revolution so that we can produce and bring Nigeria out of recession. In doing that, we have